Okay, hello and welcome to what's basically the second part. We've done our research, we've got some ideas, now it's time to get creative. And this is, a, I think this is everyone's favourite bit, apart from maybe the making as well. Um, but I'm going to come up with some ways that you can be creative and ways that you can come up with ideas. Now this particular video is the age 14 to 16, year 10 video. However, um, I'm going to include the whole lot for year 7 and year 8, even though you don't quite have as much to do, because I think it's really going to be really beneficial for you all. So, we're going to use something called random input, and I'm going to do something called a circles activity with you to help you get up, um, to help you get some ideas that you can then turn into plant pots and to help you be creative if being creative doesn't come naturally to you. If it does, then that's fantastic. Just crack on, get as many ideas down on a piece of paper as you can. So the first stage to do is circles and I'm gonna just cut across to that bit now and show you how to do it. Okay, so this is just a quick example of this circles exercise that will help you be a bit creative. So we start off by drawing um, as many, just very different type of circles as we can. It's really important that we don't make these perfect and we sort of roughly fill the page but give yourself room to grow around it because we're going to turn these into pictures now so the idea then is that we sort of come up with um, as many random things as we can think of so first of all um, let's see first thing that's coming to mind here for me might be sort of little ninja Um, second thing perhaps this one sort of oblong so I'm going to sort of turn that into a boat maybe little crow's nest on the top and these don't have to be good drawings it's really important that actually these aren't particularly good drawings there's no point in wasting your time on something that is really just an initial idea and we're not possibly going to take anywhere it's really important that we just sort of flow free with our ideas so maybe this one here can be turned into a minion um, this one here could actually become a space rocket This one could be a planet. Um, let's see. So I'm starting to struggle a little bit for thoughts and that's perfectly fine. So I can actually look around where I am and see if there's any inspiration. So there's, um, there's a guitar over there. So. Okay, um, looking around still, so there's a little Pokemon ball over there, and let's see, what else? Uh, oh, okay, um, so I could make this into some kind of animal or cat. Okay, so what I've got there is just using random input to create some random ideas. Okay, that's circles. And what we can do is we can now use that to help come up with some ideas. So as you can see, I've got things like a space rocket, I've got things like a minion, um, I've got some other things, and I'm going to try and turn them now into flower pots. Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick time lapse to show you how that looks. So some very rough sketches with colour 
And annotations, annotations are really, really important because if you're not that good a drawer, like me, then you need to be able to communicate your ideas in other ways. And so adding labels about the kind of size or the materials or even how it functions, they're gonna be really helpful to anybody else reading your ideas. Okay, so I've just come up with these random ideas. Now what I'm gonna do is an initial ideas page. I'm gonna choose my top three. So I'm gonna do the boat, the minion, the spaceship, maybe even the cat doesn't hurt to do an extra one so I'm going to choose those and now I'm going to turn those into a flower pot okay so let's see we'll start off with the minion so I've got a minion idea now and these are all going to go onto the same page so with my minion idea I can probably have something that looks a little bit like this and you don't have to be a particularly good drawer here that's the next stage so the next stage will involve you actually um, creating your drawings and making them good so minions have a they have this sort of dungarees on have their arms And then what I can have is if this is the opening for the pot then the plant can create the actual hair for the minion. Okay and then if I wanted to just sort of explain that a little bit more I could just label this. So plant makes hair, paint it on and this could be a plastic bottle, these bits could possibly be cardboard, well, that doesn't matter, it's just an idea at the moment. So that's my idea one. Idea two, we'll go with the boat idea, so this is the idea that we've got a sort of boat and the boat will have to be um, we'll have to paint the sides of this boat to make it look like a boat and then I guess we've just got the plants growing out here but we could still possibly have a mast so I could probably do this out of um, a milk bottle Painted on a sail could be cardboard. Okay, so idea number two. I think I'll leave it there just for the initial ideas. So you've got your creative input, then you've got your idea development, and this is the idea that will then go onto your page. You'll take a photograph of that. Put it onto your page okay so once you've done that and you've got that page and um, that's fantastic so if you're year seven this is you that's your ideas page so year eight i would really like to see these now turned into something a little bit more uh, skillful and communicated a little bit better so we need to do concept sketching here's some concept sketches of some different flower pots that i've got off the internet but you can see how just using shading and a bit of texture and tone can help render something as 3D. It can 
help turn something from just a very simple drug into a very high quality communication of an idea. Okay, so if you go onto the PowerPoint and you go to these links here, you will find that they take you to a really, really good um, product design teacher who shows you how to sketch, how to shade, how to draw, how to use um, crates and isometric techniques to make your drawings 3D. A very, very useful channel, full of videos. But these four videos in particular will help you get to this stage. Now, my advice to you would be to watch those videos and just practice. Practice and practice and practice until you feel confident. When you're feeling confident, then I want you to have a go at drawing some of these sketches of flower pots. And these are going to be based on your initial ideas that where your, um, your circles turned into flower pots. Okay, so you're going to then take some of those ideas, draw them in 3D, add your shading, add your colour, and get some labels on there. So you can still use Cafe Q. Um, to help analyze the idea to label. If you're not sure what Cafe Q is, uh, Google it or skip forward in the PowerPoint. You will find it on slide 15. If you're year 10, it'll be a different slide for the other year groups. Okay, so now that we've got our initial idea, the best thing that we can do is create our final idea. And really what we're looking for here is a bit of shading. And then for um, year 10 GCSE, we're going to go on to do an orthographic projection. So for the 3D drawing, really, it's more about shading than it is about anything else. So I'm going to go with the minion design. And you'll notice how I hold the pencil now. I'm not holding it too close to the front. I'm holding it right at the end to give myself loose, free lines. I'm just going to do a curve at the top. And don't worry about getting things wrong because it's still just an idea and it's still just a prototype. And so if your lines aren't quite how you want them to be, that's fine. It doesn't really matter too much. We can keep adding in faint construction lines for us to go over later on. So I'm just adding lots of little construction lines here. Now you'll notice I've not added any shading yet, however, just the curvature of the lines gives the indication it's a rounded shape. So now that I've got my rough shape sorted out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over those lines a bit darker and then I'm going to add shading to make it round. Now if you've got coloured pencils at home, uh, I really recommend using colour. Uh, it really shows what your idea is going to look like. It draws on the aesthetic qualities and how you're going to make your product look appealing and it allows you to do shading and tone just the same as a pencil would. So if you've got coloured pencils, I strongly recommend that you use them. So now for a bit of shading, once again, pencil right at the end. And I'm just going to, with the curve of the drawing, do some nice light lines. Thank you. 
and the same again for the front bit. Notice that I'm going in the same direction as much as I possibly can. This is going to be important later on. We're going to do a technique called cross hatching that most of you will have done before, I'm sure. But if you haven't, don't worry about it. So, with cross hatching, what we can do is we can go over the same bit but a little bit darker with a little bit more weight. An alternative method is you can go in the other direction. And you can see how that automatically starts to create this idea of a rounded shape. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that as a 3D shape. It's perfectly reasonable for a, a design. It would look a million times better if I'd used colouring in pencils for it. Unfortunately, I don't have any at home at the moment. Um, so we'll just have to wait. So now this is my idea. I've got a good idea of the material I'm going to use. It's gonna be a, um, a washing up a bottle. The arms are going to be plastic and I'm going to tape them on and this is the pot for the soil. Now if you're struggling to think about what other things you can label this or annotate this, use the Cafe Q. Uh, cost Aesthetics, so there we go, Minion Style function there we go the pot for the soil this bit here also allows water to drain out and um, so then we've got the ergonomics so we could talk about the measurements of this that'll probably come in later when we do our orthographic projection but this bit here is roughly about 50 millimeters we could talk about the height but that'll all come on the orthographic projection so we've got the cost we don't need to worry about we've got the aesthetics the function the ergonomics we could talk about the quality I mean it's being taped on it's not going to be that great maybe I can talk about um, paint with acrylic and in brackets I'll put two layers so we're talking about the quality there, the client, so it's minion style for Leon, who's uh, eight, and then we can also talk about the environment, so uh, plastic washing up bottle, recycled. Okay, so you can see how I've improved my annotations just by using that cafe cue, just to remind myself, well what else can I talk about? Right, so there is a final design idea. Again, it would look a million times better if you'd used colouring pencils to do that. Okay, so if you're year eight, that is you done. That's you finished. Year 10, you now need to move on to another level, okay? At year 10, we need to create something called manufacturing specification. We need to be really specific about the size, about the measurements, about all those different things are going to go on anything that you're going to miss in a 3d drawing you need to make sure is detailed so we're going to do an orthographic projection and the whole point of an orthographic projection is it's 2d it's flat but it means that every single side of the product is shown 
So these bits here, I can see exactly what that curve angle is. For the top bit, I can see exactly what the measurement and distance and how thick it needs to be. For the front, I can see the width, I can see the height of the nose. They're just things that you can't see from a 3D drawing. And it means I could send this off to any manufacturer and they could make my product for me exactly as I've intended it to be made. So orthographic projections, they're used in architecture, product design, and anywhere where you're going to send plans off to be manufactured and made by somebody else, you need to be able to do an orthographic projection. These are some GCSE examples. This was a comic book stand, a brilliant product. This was a nightlight, and this was the base for the nightlight. And you can see here the side view, the front view, and the top view. And we can see the 3D views. Again, front, top, side, front, side, top. So we can see all those different views. And I'm now going to just do a quick demonstration on how you can create an orthographic projection at home just using pen and paper. So I'll quickly just skip to that one now. Okay, so we're going to do orthographic projection now. And the whole thing about orthographic projection is it is like a technical drawing that allows you to create a product exactly as you intend it to be made with all of the sides being shown and all of the measurements being shown. So let, as I'm in my son's room, let me see if I can just get something to show you. Um, perfect. So if I drew a 3D image of this car, you wouldn't necessarily know how big the back should be, how big the side should be, the top, the bottom, all of these subtle measurements that are hidden on this product need to be shown using an orthographic projection. So to do that, you would have a top-down view. You would then also have a side view, and then you might have a front view, and in this case, you'd probably have a rear view as well. So that's an orthographic projection. It's a 2D render of the product including all the measurements and all the sizes and quite often we draw this to scale scale means it's drawn accurately to the proportions it is in real life so a one-to-one -one scale means that if something is one centimeter in real life you draw it one centimeter on the page if something is a one to two scale then it basically means you're halving the size so it's ratios right how i do orthographic is I like to divide the page into four sections. Don't worry too much about these being perfectly even. And then what I will do, I'm always gonna do my front view here, my top view above it, and my side view next to it. And there's a reason for that. And you'll find out in a minute what that reason is. So what I'm going to do now, if you're doing this technically from an engineering point of view, you will spend a lot more time measuring one centimetre out, having a start point, measuring down, making sure the lines are parallel and there's drawing boards and equipment to do that. Um, for what we're doing for GCSE for this project, that's not really necessary. So what we're going to do is we're just going to draw our front view of our minion design. And remember, this is just a flat 2D shape. Now, for this to be orthographic, we would measure it. So if the bottom of the design there is 25 millimeters, and I know that the top is roughly 40. I said 50, didn't I? Start again. So yeah, for this, when it's when you're doing an orthographic projection of an idea, it's perfectly fine to freehand draw it and just show the different sides. We know the measurements of our design at the moment, so it is important to use those correct measurements. So I'm going to now just join those bits up with a curve.
and join those bits up with a curve. And then my arm. These don't have measurements. I'm essentially just going to stick these on from whatever materials left over from the top. That's my front view. Now you can draw the details on as well, like your pattern, your design idea. I'd suggest you do that later, but for now we're really just concerned with the main shape of it. Okay, so what we do is we take the sides of the point of interest. So we move the ruler and very lightly we just draw up in a nice straight line. Draw up there and there's a little bit from the arm just sticking out there as well so we draw up. Okay, that is now going to give us the sides for our top view. So we know our top view is going to fit in there. Now I know that this is um, 25 at its thickest point. So I'll just get my ruler. So I'm just going to roughly draw this along this point. From there to there. And so what I've got is I've now got the guidelines. and the arm can just be seen sticking out the side of that one there. That's my top view, nice and easy. Now this is where it gets quite interesting because we don't have to do any more measurements. We've measured everything we need to get our side view. So it's a bit of a trick but what we need, as long as you measure an equal distance out there and an equal distance out there, that will give you a 45 degree line. So you'll notice you're not going to the corner of the page, you're doing 45 degrees, it has to be 45 or it won't work. But we're gonna transfer the measurements across and these measurements across and then we just have to draw our shape within them. So I come across here and then I come across here then when I get to there, I come down. Get to there, and I come down. And then I come across here. Across here. And we've also got the arm. We're gonna be able to see that. Okay. So now we've got all the measurements that we need. It might, to get this measurement here, have been handy to do a faint line to go up and then to come across and then to come down. And that would give us roughly what we need. However, I know, we'll just measure that. Yeah, a bit further across. I know what those measurements are, so I'm just going to put them in. Okay, so I'm now going to draw my shape in.
and then that indicates to us how thick the actual arm is. So hopefully you can see that okay, but you've got your front, your top and your side. And then all we need to do is actually put the measurements on this page. So that's 25 millimeters. The overall thickness there is 50 millimeters. And the height is 35 millimeters and you can add in the measurements for the arms and so on but that's your orthographic projection of your flower pot idea right so once you've got to that we'll look at testing materials and creating our pages